Hi, we're here in Millennium Square in Bristol. Um, this is a good place to test out the UDR GPS sensor because it's actually got an underground car park underneath it. Um, what we'll be able to do with that is uh, have total GPS signal loss and see how the sensor performs. So the car park itself is over here. We'll drive the car under it. It will lose the GPS signal and then it will be working on inertial sensors alone. We'll take a look at the data to see how good it is. The blue line is the UDR sensor and the green line the 50 Hz GPS. You can see total loss of position from the 50 Hz as it enters the car park. We've just seen the UDR uh, data uh, in that trace. Um, as you can see, the UDR sensor does, in fact, it actually gives a position, whereas the other one stopped giving position, the 50 hertz that we offer. But actually, it depends on what you're doing between which sensor you should use. So in built-up areas where you're looking at GPS signal loss or maybe tree coverage or underground car parks such as this, or tunnel networks, or tunnels, um, you're gonna to wanna to be using the UDR sensor. If you're in an outside area, such as something like this, um, the GPS 50 Hz is going to do a lot better. That's because you won't be getting multi-path from buildings and your GPS reception will be much better than around buildings in car parks, things like that. Also, with the UDR sensor, because it's using inertial sensors to give your position, if you've got an element of side slip or the vehicle's moving in a strange manner, then you might integrate incorrectly in terms of your heading and you might see weird artifacts in terms of your course over ground and position. So it really depends on what you're doing to which sense you're using. Outside in open areas, GPS 50 hertz. In inner city or poor areas of GPS reception, use the UDR. The UDR CAN sensor is available with either a 6-pin IP67 connector or 300mm pigtail. Contact info at metisengineering.com for more information.